I do believe we have seen all there is to be seen here. Best make way to the newly unlocked area. Target approaching sufficient safety emergency protocol. Warning. Energy levels low. Bleed. Flight. Had I only trained harder. Destroy. To improvement is a perilous one. Insufficient output. Do not with me. Bleed. Yourselves for battle. Black and firing. We appear to have lost them. Warning. Energy levels low. I must catch my breath. Insufficient. Warning. Energy levels low. Batting ready. Insufficient output. Warning. Energy levels low. Insufficient output. Warning. Energy levels low. Positional tactics ineffective. Warning. Energy levels low. Please! Stay where you are! Had I only trained harder? Keep your distance! Please! Insufficient output. Warning. Energy levels low. Firing! Fly! 
Insufficient power. Say goodbye. Do one. Energy levels low. Insufficient output. Keep your distance. Warning. Energy levels low. Turn to this room again. Best try a different path this time. to this room again? Best try a different path this time. You are now safe. Warning. Energy levels low. No. Perilous attack in the line. Blind side maneuver. Have we returned to this room again? Best try a different path this time. There's no one else around here. We had best look for some way forward. Target acquired. 
didn't even see him. Leticia, are you and everyone all right? Scorpia. Precisely, Your Majesty. On our homeworld, many use this power to overcome their sickness and ailments. Soon we may overcome the frailty of age itself. Yet still, you were forced to flee here from your land, yes? Only by those who seek to use Scorpia might for their wicked schemes. Consider, if you would, that there are countless worlds beyond this one with the same power we command. Should the peoples of these worlds move on your own, the Vale Empire will be helpless to hold them at bay. Hmm... Say goodbye. 
Initiating protocol, merchant. Dearest Tatiana, what would you have me do? Their technology and might is unquestionable. But how do I know they speak the truth? Know they have lived as they say? Would you have grown angry with me? For even offering such strangers my consideration? Or would you find their tales intriguing and urge me on? Oh, Tatiana, why did you have to leave me? How oh, I miss you so. Ready. I as you, you will not fool me with such 
warning. Energy levels low. Things are going to Energy levels low. Insufficient outlet. Warning. Energy levels low. What's this? You can't yeah. escape me! More possible gathering strength. Blind side recommended. Out of my way! Insufficient power. Yeah. Well, I'm for you. Warning. Energy levels low. Insufficient power. The only way is... My guess is Boldor himself will be up ahead here. You sure you're ready for this, Leticia? Never have I been more. Come now, let us put an end to this. I was certain you would come. Bulldor. Bulldor. You've lost yourself in your twisted dreams of what the Scorpion might offer you. Take a good hard look at yourself now. Do you still see one of the humanoids you wanted to save? Humanoid? Of course not. The power the Scorpion possess is divine. In joining them, I am now closer to a god than mortal. Our kind and the Scorpium are but life by different forms. None of us living can claim ourselves gods. And there is no need for any of you to be. My only desire is for you to join us and live your lives in a whole new world, one free of sickness and conflict. As Emperor of Vale, it is my duty to lead my people to peace. And in becoming the Scorpion's God, I can finally fulfill my duty. Your current existence is no different from an android like myself. Constructed by humans, given life through technology, we will never be gods. <laughs> Listen to yourself. Are the gods of history not but man-made creations? Then surely you would agree that the most godlike among us now is either you or myself. You're a paltry excuse for one. Man cloaks himself in knowledge and power taken from others and mistakes himself an idol. You are just one of many who litter the pages of our history. Yes, correct. And even with all the technological advancements we've seen, your story is quite common. History itself will determine my divine status. Once the whole universe is one with the Scorpium, we shall be omnipotent. We shall become 
God. Well, it'll be impossible for you to become one, since we're here to make sure that never happens. The universe needs not such a deity. If there is anything divine in this world, it is but the flame of life inside of all of us. Mortal life has always feared the unknown. A fear of the divine is only natural. Yet fear you will not find in us, nor a thought spared for the desecration you speak of. We're not going to get anywhere arguing about this, are we, Boltor? At last, a sentiment I find agreement with. As mortals, we stand more powerful than the god you claim to be. Princess Leticia, it is precisely that fiery spirit of yours which Scorpion so desperately needs. Join me, my new daughter. Detecting incoming attack. Time has come for you to learn your place. Behold, the infinite power of a god! The Scorpion Way is to seek the evolution of all life through integration. Okay. Why then do you inhibit us? There was never a need for a single path forward. Neither were integration nor a any more than one of countless possibilities. You, a world meant to find those people who join us, would now deny our very way. Correct. I have determined the Scorpion ideology is necessary. Of thought, rather than You too, will see the birth of an all new Scorpion. Then we are at a standstill, harboring visions wholly incompatible. Let us see then which path the network chooses. I find your lack of resolve disappointing. You lack the power your words would suggest. You are no match for your new god! Right now! Behold my might! I have surpassed all you have ever known! The universe itself shall evolve through total integration! Yes, this is how it must be! Do not disappoint me, sir! We can just wield sheer will like a sword and stab him! A battle in this digital world essentially equates to the use of data traffic to overwhelm your opponent. For organic life forms like yourselves, it may be best to think of this as what you call willpower or resolve. Mind against mind. Heart against heart. Your mind is that all as God is your weapon against you. Come now! Join us, my children! I alone have the knowledge and power to save people from illness! I don't need your interference! Each of us must find within ourselves the strength to defend that which we cherish! You and I are disparate beings! I cannot stand your presumption to speak in my place! Never have I relied on the power of the divine! My well-being will forever be delivered by mine own hands! But I'm not an assistant. These humanoids unfortunately cause war and strife. But we too are the ones who bring peace and order. Find my hand. This world stays. Uh, no! Cannot be! A god cannot be bested! Make yourself stronger than a god! Preposterous! What could you lowly mortals ever hope to do? 
With my power as a god, I could bring endless bliss to all life in this world! To all life in the universe! With such power, I will not... must not be beat! You are Buldor Il Vale. Man, not God! I am. How could one possibly know happiness in a world without sorrow to temper it? A world forged from single-minded devotion is ultimately the same as one empty of all. No, stop that. Stare not at me with those eyes, mortal. Baldor. I will not be eradicated. I cannot be. I alone am destined to be your new god and leader. Behind me, now. Enough! No more of this! I will not be defeated here! I refuse! What's going on? Baldor's will endures and refuses to be erased. Should he continue to resist in this way, his virtual realm will be obliterated with all in it. Baldor! Cease this at once! The battle is over! Words are useless. I will do what is needed. Please, no! My universe just needs me! Here we part. What? No! I am unable to maintain your consciousness in this space any longer. With what power I have left, I will see you returned safely. But what's gonna happen to you? You possess the potential to both understand the Scorpion and guide them to an enlightened future. Through you, may the seeds of all evolutionary paths for life be sown. I place my faith in you. Understood. Rest assured. Leticia, our journey together was a valuable experience. If there are others with minds as open and accepting as yours, a peaceful coexistence with Scorpion will someday be possible. Thank you, Leticia, for affirming this for me. Tuma! My investigation is at its end. Is it all over now? I am inclined to believe it only just begins. I would agree. Thank you, little Duma. We are to be a protectorate, then? Yes. As I mentioned before, Asterfor's prolonged contact with more advanced civilizations categorized it as a protectorate of the Pangalactic Federation. Are we to be subjected to surveillance by an ambassador? No. Nothing quite as direct as that. Aster will remain under observation to prevent any unnecessary interaction with advanced civilizations until it reaches a certain threshold. Hmm. <laughs> Pretty imperious, aren't you? Was that not where the Federation's faults originally lie? Guess some things are hard to change. And though it might not exactly be compensation, all of you who have been subject to intense intervention 
now have the option to travel to any Federation system to live or study. Studying on a different planet? I must say, I don't hate the thought. Right? Agreed. But I must refuse. I vowed to attend to tasks on this planet using mine own strength. I've had lesson enough as to the consequences of progression that was acquired through the power of others. That's true. If I studied medical science at such an advanced level, I'm pretty sure I could save lives all across the universe. But first and foremost, I want to treat the suffering people of this world with my own hands and using our own techniques. Our journey into the stars must be one born of our own volition. Only then will we find ourselves on equal ground with you and yours. I see. You know, you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, if it were up to me, I'd set up a branch of Lawrence Logistics right here in Osarius, and that would let us see as much or as little of each other as we could ever want. Now is a time for restraint. Surely, the events here have opened your eyes to the importance of the Federation's underdeveloped planet preservation pact. Yeah, 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 I get it. But come on, you gotta at least see how hard that is on a personal level. Don't be so uptight. I say this with respect to the positions of both Elena and Marielle. But, from my own view, I fail to find fault in Raymond's suggestion. Wow, Alby. Can't say I expected that coming from you. Spare me. I simply speak for us all. I wonder if my ancestors also felt the same way long ago. <laughs> Worry not. We have a tendency to be fine, after all. <laughs> You know, you're a lot more carefree now than you were before. For that, I know who to thank. Oh my, who could that be? Did we have someone irresponsible like that around? Oh yes. At hand, I might say. Oh yeah? <laughs> well... <laughs> we both got jobs to do, right? <laughs> more than I care for, indeed. <sighs> if only some god would show up and free us all from the burdens of work life so we could just kick back and have fun. <laughs> Says the man bound to place his burdens on the shoulders of poor Chloe and Elena. Hey, I've become crazy capable after all this. I'm sure they feel like they can just relax and enjoy the ride. You are free to believe whatever you want. Ray? Okay, let's leave it at that. Ray, this is the Aldis. We're now in geostationary orbit. Copy that. Yep, best get going before this turns into another pick on Ray fest. It does seem about time. This is Raymond for the Aldis. Commence transfer. Five eighty three. An unprecedented crisis for the Pangalactic Federation was resolved with the cooperation of the planets for Gold and Aster Four. However, the corruption which plagued the highest levels of Federation leadership continues to leave its mark on the organization. Amidst growing calls from Federation captains, my grandfather. Emerson T. Kenny was assigned as interim commander of the Federation fleet. A retired military man, he refused at first, but after much pushback, he took the reins to lead the Federation from its worst crisis yet. Through these troubled events, 
I've come to question the Federation's purpose in this galaxy, as well as my own function as one of its officers. But I choose to believe that its cause is still just. We must ensure a future of peace. Pan-Galactic Federation Lieutenant Mariel L. Kenny The events that unfolded spanned numerous star systems. Though their sovereign was defeated, remnants of the centralist Scorpium and their invasive measures still remained. Those among the Pan-Galactic Federation who aligned with the Scorpium cause were on the run, but still retained their influence. To combat both these foes, my partner Elena, armed with data saved from Duma's survey, helped us hit the Scorpium network from their own colony. Duma's experiences and noble ideology had a profound impact on the network and saw the remaining centralists quickly weakened. And while everything might still be far from wrapped up, it shouldn't be too long now until the Scorpium find themselves on the right track. My hope now is that the Pan-Galactic Federation might find its way too. Captain of the Lawrence Logistics Ship, the Aldous, Raymond Lawrence. Our peace treaty with the Empire had been postponed indefinitely due to the Scorpium conflict. Yet today, discussions have concluded. I present the documents signed by Emperor Gerard. Good news at last. And what news of my daughter? Her Highness remained determined and performed her duties admirably. She did not back down before the Empire's new commanders. She also took great care not to say anything which may serve to undermine Emperor Gerard's position. Is that so? No. Where might she be this moment? <sighs> Your Majesty, the Princess... She claimed herself tired and parted ways with us, asking we not follow. Huh? Your Majesty. <laughs> well, not much we can do about that. Perhaps I was in too much a rush to abdicate. These are times of peace. I best stand strong for her till she is ready. Now, Bertrand, Lola, I would ask you look after my daughter and I for some time yet. Sir. Sir. My... I am beyond exhausted. Oh, my shoulders ache. If only I could visit Nina. Maester Midas is always off somewhere. Albert and Theo continue their rounds about the kingdom. <sighs> Malkia and Mariel both find themselves working through their own great troubles. And I scarce get to see Ray, Elena, and Chloe. <sighs> How I wish to see them. For now, I'll have to do. You prove more strict than Albert himself. Currently, Nina drains my pockets with her medical services for Colonel Valange. I cannot afford to lose this position. So excuse me if I take my work seriously. <sighs> that being said, Princess Leticia, His Majesty calls for you. Please make your way back to the Royal City. There is much, much work that remains to be done. I am working quite diligently, I'll have you know!